it up first. For a look at our state's legislative assembly, politics, and people, watch Inside North Dakota Politics, Sundays on KX News. KX News, putting North Dakota first. And welcome back. In today's KX Conversation, we're joined by Dr. Noe Mateo, an infectious disease specialist at Sanford Health. Dr. Mateo, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. The CDC has released information recently about new variants of COVID. A new strain in England, South Africa, and Nigeria seem to be on their radar. Obviously, diseases mutate and change, but what do you know about this new strain? These new strains turn out to be primarily more transmissible. They're easier to transfer and spread in a population and from person to person. So in the past, when we'd have the usual virus circulating, if one member of a family was positive, we would say, well, at least half of the other family members are already positive as well. With these new strains, it's a good bet that if one person in a family is infected, then the rest of the family members are likely to be infected as well. When you take a look at a general population, these viruses transmit much more easily, and that means a pandemic will last longer. There will be a higher caseload of people getting actually sick or dying. Not because the virus itself is any more virulent. It's not any more capable of causing illness or death, but the fact that it just spreads uh, more easily throughout the population. What effects could these new strains of COVID have on herd immunity and other treatments such as antibodies? As far as herd immunity is concerned, because these viruses are much uh, easier to, to transmit, it has a higher R0 number. R0 simply refers to a reproduction number. In other words, uh, when we have a, uh, a virus for which when you detect one positive individual, you already know two people are, are infected as well. That's an R0 of two. If you have th these new strains turn out to have an R0 closer to five. And the implication there is that in the past when we estimated that herd immunity can be achieved when only about 60 to 70% of the population has developed antibodies, the newer estimates are closer to uh, 85 to 90%, if not higher. So you really are starting to look at requiring immunization levels close to what we've achieved for measles instead of influenza. So those are two polar opposites about r knots and how herd immunity operates. And very quickly, what impact will this have on the vaccines? So the vaccines are still effective. What we're seeing is that they are protective uh, for individuals with either the wild type virus or these mutant strains. We're not seeing any concerns that they're any less effective against these mutant strains, no matter whether, whether it's from the UK or South Africa or Nigeria or other countries around the world. I think uh, we're still uh, confident that these new uh, strains are gonna be capable of being neutralized and immunized against by the current vaccines. Sanford Health Infectious Disease Specialist, Dr. Noe Mateo, thank you for being here. You're welcome, my pleasure.